Good evening, Simon here, Explosive Action, and we are back with a Black Metal CD update. Little pile here of Black Metal CDs to get through, mostly original pressing, so let's take a listen. I'm going to leave what we are listening to until the very end, because I'm showing that as well. So, the first thing we're going to look at is... Thy Infernal Warlords of Hell. This is the second and final album from this band in 2001. Uh, this is essentially the US version of Norse Core, especially Marduk's version of it. Like, this is just furious Blitzkrieg stuff. That's, look at the cover. Yep, that is what you're getting with Die Infernal. Um, it starts with this back masking devil snarl, uh, and then it goes into a cacophony of satanic black metal chaos. It's, um, it's completely furious blistering but uh still the melodic trem riffs as well uh constant blasts with then you know the alternating double kicks thing the the, the proper norse core i mean it it does what it says on the tin look at the look at the thing i mean think of something like um yeah Sethereal's hell eternal um that's that's a good comparison i think um, and look at the, the overtly comic book Satan there on the front. It's that kind of black metal. And look, in the logo, they've got, they've got the, uh, the old horns, like in the logo. You know what you're getting. But look, it's not just that furious all the time. It does have some uh, more musical interludes that get a bit more dissection-y. Um, like the main riff on the second track, uh, Rotting in Hell. <laughs> um, that's... That's a bit more in that dissection, uh, Sumber Lane style, but you know, really you're getting your Dark Funeral, Marduk, Sethereal, Warlords of Hell from Thy Infernal. Sometimes you just need to clear out the eardrums with a horn-shaped Q-tips. Moving on from the Blitzkrieg, we've got a uh, slightly more refined Absu with Tara. Now, Absu for me was a band that I completely missed outside of their debut, uh, Barathrum. Uh, which I have an LP and I've always liked that, but uh, the other albums I heard since the debut just didn't do a great deal for me, so I, I gave up pretty early um, and never got as far as this one. So when Ben Brainsmasher got wind of this, uh, he spent three solid months trying to get me to buy a copy of Tara. I am kidding you not. Every second day he'd send me a message saying, have you got Tara yet? And it just went on like that for bloody months. And I say thank you to Ben because, bit of a revelation, um, it opens with bagpipes, which I did not expect. I, I should say as well that I didn't listen to a single note of it when he was telling me to buy it. I just, okay, he's recommending it, I'll just go buy it. When he finally wore me down, I didn't listen to a single note. So hearing bagpipes straight away, I thought he was trolling me. Uh, but anyway, then it kicks into some of the best, most tightest extreme metal drums that you're ever going to hear. Um, I don't play any instrument, um, but I've always had a bit of an ear for the drums. That's what I focus for when I'm listening to bands, uh, quality of the drums. Um, and this is nuts. This is absolutely nuts stuff. Completely mental. There's the band there. Um, I think it's helped by the very dry and precise production on the snare and the kicks. It is... Um, yeah, it doesn't boom, so he's able to get to ridiculous speeds. And by he, I mean Proscriptor, who is sort of the main uh, main person behind Absu, uh, vocalist and drums. He gets some mighty speed. Like, at times, reminded me of, like, Commando Pete out of Morbid Angel, but really out of Terrorizer. Like, it's that kind of almost grind blasting um, and, and the production that goes with it. But... Way more dynamic, uh, you know, this is black metal, it's not grindcore. Um, uh, as for the rest of the music, like, it really is quite phenomenal. Um, it's adventurous, I'd, I don't want to say black thrash, because then you're going to start thinking of, you know, Destroy Triple Six. It's more in the pocket of something like, um, you know, Dis uh, Disaster, I think the German band, I think, I think they're German, Disaster, D-E-S, Disaster. Um, but really, Absu is one of those bands that others aspire to be. Um, the real obvious comparison, uh, and I think I'm probably 
the, one of the few people that would come to it from this direction, which is Mel Melikesh. Um, I've loved uh, Melikesh's uh, gin and Sphinx for years, and never put two and two together that that was the proscript a side project from Absu. Um, so yeah, I don't think many people are going to do that mistake. But um, yeah, this uh, this was a revelation for me. Absolutely fantastic. Really top quality. Um, just I don't know what to say. Uh, the, the the photo that they show there, you know, makes you think it's going to be you know loutish black thrash, but it's not. This is a proper musical black metal album. Um, yeah. But by this point, I think I'm the last person in the world to acknowledge this album. So uh, that's on me. To uh, that's my cross to bear. Everyone else out there, you should already know Tara by Absu. Okay, the next one is a very interesting one and done band from 2000. This is Galskarg with Erotic Funeral. Um, this is, well, it's kind of a two piece featuring Gal, who you will know from uh, Gorgoroth, and Skarg, who is from a band called Sigfader. Um, and the, for the best I can work out, it was a real band, but they never released anything. Um, I did a bit of research, I couldn't find the album, there was no thing you could buy, so I'm not sure what the hell they sound like, but anyway, um, Gal Skarg, and then session drums from a guy called Mutt, as in like, you know, dog, Mutt, from a band called Trolldom, uh, who I do know. So this is very rooted in that 2000 era, um, you know, perverse, loose, noisy black metal. Kind of, you know, Satogua, Carpathian Forest, um, but with a bit more industrial overtones to it. That's what sort of sets this apart. You can sort of get that from the, you know, cosmic -y looking cover there. Uh, inside's all very black, not too much going on there. Um, I think if you like, uh, you know, Gorgoroth's later albums, like uh, Incipit Satan, uh, th there's a lot of similarities here. Um, so we can take a look inside. I mean, uh, you, you got some very 2000s uh, looking photography there, just invert the band photo. There you go. Um, final page. Yeah, so this is, uh, I mean, Gal's vocals on this, very processed with distortion. Uh, and when he, you know, he screeches the whole thing, but when he hits the high screams, it's, it's off the chain, it's like Anal Nathrak, like he's just, he's kind of losing it. Um, the industrial part of this comes into the sort of interlude tracks and some of the ambient type things, the, not so much in the songs, they're like separate songs that are the industrial songs. Um, kind of sound like a sci-fi machine, uh, repetitive loops, um, they kind of litter the album. Uh, it, it's like, uh, what, 10, 13 tracks all up, and I think about four of them maybe five, uh, these industrial ambient musical bits. Um, and they're quite good, they're just, you know, they're very repetitive. Uh, like one of the tracks, one of those is called Mankind hyphen development, and then three question marks. I don't know, whatever. Um, track six is called Great Joy, uh, and that starts off with like a, a galloping riff that doesn't sound too dissimilar to Camphor. So, you know, it's Norwegian, black metal, but 2000s era. Um, I really think that, you know, um, shining black leather kind of Carpathian forest is where you start with this and then just add some industrial and that's what you get with Galskarg, the only album, Erotic Funeral. In one foul swoop, I picked up the entire Judas Iscariot collection off Discogs uh, from a local seller. Um, I'll just pull them all out at once. So I've got uh, uh, the Cold Earth slipped below. I got uh, Thy Dying Light of Great Eternity uh, Distant in Solitary Night Heaven in Flames and the last one to embrace the corpses bleeding uh, and I'll just hold on to this one for the moment. Um, it's a band that I once had the debut um, We'll try and pull back out again. So this is the first one. Um, I had this one 20 years ago. Uh, Soonish after it came out, I had that one. Um, didn't like it very much. It, it was pretty average, and honestly, it still is kind of average. 
Um, but I was convinced again by Ben Brain Smasher to give this band another go. Uh, he rates them quite highly, uh, particularly this one, to embrace the corpses bleeding. Very glad that I did give them a second chance. Um, uh, but yeah, Judas Iscariot, they're, they're the template for late 90s, early 2000s US black metal. It all roots back to Judas Iscariot. Uh, stripped back, no frills, largely one man band. A guy called uh, Arkananton, if I'm saying that right, that's his uh, stage name anyway. Um, as the downside of it being a one man band uh, was that these early ones, so we're talking Cold Earth. Um, and then through till Heaven in Flames, I think it was. Round about that era. Uh, he did the drums as well, and the, he gets better each album, I'll put it that way, but it's pretty rough at the start. Um, but by the last two albums, and especially this one in 2002, Session Drummer. Best decision he could have made, because he's great at everything and he's okay at drums, but he's the drummer on here, combined with his guitar, vocals, everything else, makes this an absolute standout album for Judas Iscariot. As a whole, the collection is really good, but this is the one. If you're going to pick one album, you get this one. That's my suggestion if you've never heard them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the first two, as I said, like a couple, of, a bit of an acquired taste at the start, but um, stick with it. You're going to get some top quality US black metal, particularly with this one here, to embrace the corpse that's leading. So, yeah, if you've only ever checked out the first two, check out the last two. Here's a classic of the genre. This is Zabalba with uh, the English <laughs> English uh, pronunciation of this is hilarious. Ah, zam, poop, ek. I know, get get the laughter out of your system. I think everybody makes that joke about this album. Ah, zam, poop, ek, which is Mayan, or at least an attempt at Mayan, ancient Mayan, um, and it has a translation that I completely forgot, but anyway, that's... Um, it's not English, they're not saying the word poop. But anyway, let's get that out of the way. 1994 Mexican black metal with the early Mayan themes that I just spoke about. Um, quite mid-paced, you know, stripped down, grim, very grim. It sits nicely with, you know, a blaze, blaze in the northern sky and uh, under the sign of the black mark. Like, it's, it's in that realm, particularly a blaze, that early Dark Throne sound. A lot of that here. Um, I don't know if they were listening to it um, or it's just a bit of a coincidence at the time, but yeah, it's th there's a riff in the first song that is straight off a blaze, so yeah. Um, yeah, simple, loose black metal. Uh, it never really breaks a sweat, uh, it just has killer riffs and, riffs and proper tom drum rolls, which is very nice. I like it when bands don't forget that they have toms, uh, very good. Uh, a lot of punky DB, twisted goblin vocals, you know, all the stuff you get in the early black metal days. Um, for the longest time, this was the only thing that the band put out in uh, 1994, um, and it became quite iconic in the scene because of that. You know, the only thing you could get from this mysterious band, Zabalba. A couple of demos either side, I think there was an EP maybe in there, but no other full length until 2018. They came back. Um, had to change their name slightly, I think it's Zabalba Ites, something like that. Because in the meantime, some horrendous hardcore band decided to call themselves Zabalba. I don't know, I guess they didn't want to fight with them, so... Uh, but this is the original. This is the original press on uh, Guttural Records. Kind of challenging to find. I was very lucky to find this one um, on a Facebook group. Uh, paid a pretty reasonable price compared to Discogs, at least half Discogs price, so I was very happy get the OG press. I love the um, you know, very sort of simple sun, no, moon, uh, you know, kind of Mayan theme there. It looks like a worship kind of photo. Really cool. Um, and the Mayan themes, they extend into some of the music as well. A um, little bit of that tribal sound, primal um, instruments, that kind of thing. They're not hugely prevalent, but it does show up. So yeah, if you've not heard this Zabalba album, take a look inside, just lyrics, definitely check it out. Um, it's been reissued quite a few times, I think you could probably easily get an LP from Nuclear War now, they seem to be with that label now. Um, but yeah, very happy to have this original press of Zabalba Arzan Oopek on Guttural Records. Fast forwarding to 2021, we have the debut album from a brand new Western Australian band, 
Sanctum of Solitude. Um, this album is called Deciphering the Text and Symbols, Demonic Necromancy. Say that three times fast. Uh, I got this thrown in as a gift uh, with my order of that Zabalba CD uh, from a guy on Facebook. It turns out that the um, main songwriter of this band um, was the seller, so he threw it in, which was you know a nice gift. And man, I was happy he did. This thing is a belter. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but the um, the guy was also the bassist in a Western Australian local band called The Fuhrer. The Fuhrer was an early 2000s, um, more furious, just nasty black metal. Um, they did an album called Advance Australia Warfare, which is a bit of a take on our national anthem. Um, and they came and played Sydney a couple of times, at least when I saw them. It was just fun and furious, crazy black metal. You didn't take it too seriously. And the reason you couldn't take it too seriously was that bassist he decided to do his corpse paint like a boiled lolly. You can't take that seriously. He stripes, it was absolutely amazing. And all of us watching at the time were laughing, we were in stitches saying, check out boiled lolly head, this is amazing stuff. But anyway, no corpse paint on this one with uh, Sanctum of Solitude. This is um, grandiose and lush black metal uh, in that very Australian sound like Nazul, Pestilential Shadows, you like that kind of stuff. This is right in the pocket with that, so good. Um, if you're not familiar with those bands, then think of a, a more modern um, and a more furious Dimmable Gear Storm Blast. You're getting somewhere with this. It's it's really, um, you know, the, the strong keyboards like have a, a constant orchestral layer melds with the guitar like they're not fighting they sort of become one instrument it's very very nice sounding uh, drums are sort of mostly blasty um, but then they you know they do slow down get into a bit of a groove as well take the booklet out um, so you can find bald lolly head in here no he's he's wearing a cloak so I can't find bald lolly head and there's some nice artwork there on the back um, so yeah, I admit I did not know who this band was until um, he mentioned who uh, he was and this was his new album, Would I Like It? And yeah, so thankful to have said yes because um, this is incredibly high quality uh, black metal from Australia that you know, I want more people to hear. So it's Sanctum of Solitude, uh, deciphering the text and symbols of demonic necromancy. As I always do, check the description below because there's going to be a link and you can check it out yourself. Definitely the highlight pickup for me in this video. What we're listening to, Dark Lord. This is Symphony Satanica. This is an extremely, extremely hard to find Australian brutal black metal CD from 2002. Uh, these guys came from South Australia, uh, from Adelaide especially. You can hear it in the background. You've been able to hear it the whole time. If you could think of uh, US death metal band Infesta. If they played black metal like Aussie band Lord Chaos, added in some crazy shred solos and you'll get Dark Lord. This is a really unique thing. I can't say I've ever heard such a perfect mix of brutal That's vocals. Brutal death metal mixed with symphonic black metal and these solos. Come on! This is this is such a good album, man. Um, you'll get like eight bars of brutal, you know, funebrum style death metal, um, and then it just goes bang into that symphonic black metal with keys and just you know laying on the all the tropes of symphonic black metal. And then those Marty Friedman like sweet picking solos, Chef's Kiss. This thing is so good. Um, as I said, very tough to get, I got quite lucky. Um, the same seller that had all those Judas Iscariot CDs on uh, Discogs, um, he uh, had this one up there and uh, he had it for the very reasonable price of 40 Australian dollars, which compared to the next one available for sale was, was missing a zero off the end of it. Um, this thing typically goes for one or two hundred dollars, so I got very lucky, right place, right time. Um, 
seriously, go check the Discogs sale for this, and you'll look at the like you know the sale history graph, and it's like, and then the one down the down the very end is mine. So happy with that. Check out the twin guitars. Look at that. Like, ah, uh, utterly furious, and that drummer on the end there. So so good. Um, this uh, has a LP. Came out in 2006 in France, but that you know you got about as much luck finding that as you do this CD. So um, it's a bit of a shame that my favourite thing in this update is something that's going to be so hard to find. But I do suggest put it on your watch lists. Go hunting in those used bins because if you see something and it's like admittedly it's a fairly average cover. It's just very early 2000s Photoshop kind of thing. Let's add some. Uh, you know, it's like nocturnal art production stuff, like an Odium cover maybe, just stars and a logo. If you see this in a bin somewhere, pick the thing up. Symphony Satanica from Dark Lord, absolutely amazing Australian black metal. And that's it, that's my black metal CD update uh, for this month. Hope you all enjoyed, uh, particularly that Dark Lord. If you did, please like, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Check out this thing and that thing, whatever they may be. See you next time.